This video is dedicated to James Humphreys. James, thank you. I can't remember if I've ever played this 1v1 deck before because I don't even remember making it to be honest. Yorgmoth Thran Physician versus the Maelstrom Wanderer. Be expecting to see a lot more of that in the recent weeks and months with all the Cascade stuff that's been printed in Commander Legends. But yeah, like I said, can't remember if I've actually played this one before, so apologies if it's awful. A wild growth onto the forest for our opponent. And we get into a land, which we will just play and pass. Then that forest takes them into Talisman of Curiosity. Hopefully they'll make a land here. Well, that'll help them to get into lands. Miri's Guile, down to four cards in hand. Doesn't seem as though they've got a land to make. And we get into Senga Autocrat. We'll get down some ramp of our own in Jet Medallion. Huh, well, that's a decent one to rip off the top. A Mana Vault might take them into some more ramp. Uh, it's not, yeah, I was going to say, I hope it's not the Primeval Titan. Well, they get Thran Dynamo down. That's all three of their colours, so uh, what is that? Four, five, six, and seven. Probably sees Maelstrom Wanderer next turn. We're not going to deal with artifacts very well in a mono black deck. Alright, Ogre Slumlord. I think we need to concentrate on getting a bunch of tokens into play so that we can potentially get rid of the Maelstrom Wanderer as soon as it comes in. Not really the best way to deal with Maelstrom Wanderer. We'd preferably want to draw into something like Oubliette. But this is an old deck from back when Yorgmoth first came out. So I don't think we're going to be able to draw into Oubliette. Because it's not in the deck. Okay, surprisingly they seem to be tapping out for the Mana Vault here. So deciding to untap that. Maybe they don't fancy their odds of getting into a land. No, they haven't gotten into a land. Alright, so definitely be seeing the Maelstrom Wanderer next turn, I would think, because now they've got the extra mana from Mana Vault. Speaking of lands, we don't seem to be getting into them at all. So why don't we just try out our Yorgmoth? And then we will swing in for two with the Sengir Autocrat. Oh, and actually, I think they would have had the mana had they have gone for the Coalition Relic as well. I don't think they put a charge counter on the Coalition Relic. But deciding again not to do that, doing something at the end of the turn here, seemingly. Yeah, now deciding to put the charge counter on there. Next Bloom Ancient, going in for triple mana. Yeah, unfortunately, if we had the mana, we could steal that with the Necro Skitter, and that would be really good. Maybe we can trick them into blocking the Sengir Autocrat. Alright, well, there's some mana at least. Actually, that helps us, doesn't it? So now we can go Necro Skitter for two mana. We can go Weaponcraft Enthusiast, and that'll get us into some tokens. And then we can steal that Nyx Bloom Ancient away, can't we? So let's go one life, minus counter on there, sacrifice a servo. Actually, we'll get rid of the serfs first. And do the same again until we get rid of the Nyx Bloom Ancient. And there we are, triggering the Necro Skitter. Definitely bring that back under our control. And cleared a lot of lands off the top. Let's... Go in for four points of damage. Our opponent's still got the mana for their Maelstrom Wanderer next turn. I'm surprised we haven't seen it yet, to be honest. I think they've been messing about a little bit too much. They could have steamrolled us by now, but we've got a little bit of something to do at this point. Uh, let's get rid of the... I think we can get rid of Crucible. And we'll just get rid of a Swamp as well. Don't know if we're going to need Tech Edge at some point. Looks like they're going in for the Maelstrom Wanderer now. So see what they get into off of the Cascade. Hopefully it's not Inferno Titan or anything like that. Uh, Phyrexian Metamorph probably goes for the Nyxbloom Ancient. Yeah, go for Nyxbloom Ancient with that. And then a Ponder. Well, that's not the worst Maelstrom Wanderer I've ever seen. So I think... And then they get into a Reflecting Pool as well. So their mana is well and truly... So their mana is well and truly underway here, getting to a Simic Signet, that is triple mana off of the land, don't forget. And that takes them into a Time Spiral, they'll get to untap lands, they all tap for triple mana. Uh, yeah, I think 
I think we just let that go without doing anything with the York moth. Okay, nest of scarabs gets us into a lot of insect tokens potentially. Not really much of anything else in there though, unfortunately. Birds of Paradise from our opponent. We can grab that off of our opponent, actually. And is it Signet? And then Chandra, Torture Defiance. That can get rid of Yorgmoth with the minus ability. But instead, deciding to exile the top card. And it takes them into a Nature's Law. Which they go for immediately. Yep, yeah, just... Deciding to ramp through this turn, apparently, a talisman. They've got a storm count going as well. I don't know if this is storm. It doesn't look as though it is. Yeah, I dare say they swing in here, so... Might take five from the Nyx Bloom Ancient block with the servo and get rid of the birds, although they decide not to do that. Uh, so we'll... We'll get rid of the birds here by sacrificing a servo. And that will bring it into play under our control, and it's just more mana for us next turn. Dictate of Erebos is really good. And Grim Harry Specs is just more mana for us as well. We go Swamp. Get three mana into a Sol Ring. That can take us into Dictate of Erebos. And we've got the triple mana from our opponent's Nyx Bloom Ancient, don't forget. We'll drop the Grim Harry Specs. Drop the Nest of Scarabs. And the Reassembling Skeleton. Then we'll start to sacrifice some stuff. Uh, we'll put a minus counter on one of our things. So that we still get the card draw. Oh, actually, we can just not target anything with the minus counter. So let's just say OK. Sacrifice Reassembling Skeleton. And that draws us with the Grim Harry Specs, our Yorgmoth. And it forces our opponent to sack a creature. So they'll lose their triple mana here. We could have tried to um, put a minus counter on the Phyrexian Metamorph. But they would have sacrificed it in response. And we would have lost the card draw with Yorgmoth. So we might as well just try and get the card draw. Okay, defense grid. I don't mind that. We'll throw out defense grid. Now our opponent is less likely to do anything to us. Uh, let's get the Reassembling Skeleton out of the bin. And we will sacrifice the Reassembling Skeleton again. Which, again, will draw us a couple of cards and trigger the Dictate of Erebos. Alright, Pitiless Plunderer. Along with the Kakusho, that's really good. Let's throw out the Kakusho. Uh, we'll throw out the Bitter Blossom as well. Then I think we can also go Pitiless Plunderer. And that can be our turn, I think. Let's swing in at the Narset. Or not the Narset, the Chandra. 5-5 five, five, Nyx Bloom in at Chandra. And then the rest can go in at our opponent. Yeah, so wasn't holding out much hope as soon as we saw the Fast Mana in the Mana Vault. But like I said, I think our opponent... Might have been a bit too slow. Willfully slow by the looks of it. I think they were dirtling around a little bit too much. Typically speaking, you want to get the uh, Maelstrom Wanderer into play as soon as you can. So I'm fairly comfortable in saying that we can deal with whatever our opponent does at this point. We don't want to lose our Yorgmoth. We don't want to lose the Nyx Bloom Ancient as well, because it's going to allow us to keep our Yorgmoth in play. But we can sacrifice things at instant speed which allows us to um, make insects and trigger the Dictate of Erebos, is the important one. Okay, Tezzeret the Seeker. Can always search for an artifact that might be troublesome for us. They're going minus X. So maybe that... So maybe that is... Oh no, it's a Mana Crypt. thought it might be Pithing Needle or something like that. So they could actually have gone minus... Zero on that, couldn't they? They didn't have to go minus one. Might as well have got the Sol Ring. If they were going to go minus one. Save themselves a bit of life, potentially. And there we go, getting into Maelstrom Wanderer again. Uh, <laughs> Frost Titan will stop something from untapping. Don't really care what they target with that, to be honest. Okay, tapping down the Kakusho. Yeah, we'll allow it. 
and then cascading into treachery uh, they can gain control of something yeah they're targeting the Nyx Bloom Ancient with that so we'll kill two birds with one stone we'll get rid of their Nyx Bloom Ancient and their Frost Titan draw some cards, make a treasure token and like I said force them to get rid of Frost Titan and our opponent decides to scoop to that. I think they see the writing on the wall at this point. We haven't quite got them, but we're pretty close to it. They won't keep the Maelstrom Wanderer in play. Uh, Treachery obviously doesn't do anything. So we're swinging at them for five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. And then that can be 14. So yeah, pretty close to getting them there. Oh, we also could have... Yeah, this could have made some insect tokens by putting plus counters, or minus counters, sorry, on some of our own stuff. So we could have gotten them next turn if we'd made a couple of insects turning sideways and we get them. Uh, but yeah, that went a lot better than I thought it was going to. Like I said before, as soon as I saw the fast mana against Maelstrom Wanderer, I uh, didn't hold out much hope, but I think our opponent throwing out the Nyx Bloom Ancient was their own undoing. They just obviously didn't know about the Necro Skitter, because how could they... Yeah, that was a fun one. If you enjoyed it as well, then be sure to leave it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.